There is nothing better than a big backyard. And what we've created is what dreams are made of. So when it comes to designing backyards, it can be quite overwhelming. So an industry tip is to divide the garden into zones and tackle each zone one at a time. In this garden, I've created three zones. Zone one consists of my entertainment zone, which will be the deck and the pizza oven. Zone two consists of my produce and play, and I've situated it towards the back. So that's my vegetable garden and my kids' play area. Zone three will be through the middle, consisting of my lawn area and my planting zone, which will be along my fence line at the back. Let's start with the entertainment zone. Now, the reason why you have an entertainment zone is because it's a continuation of your internal floor plan. Now, we're not doing a big extension to the back of the house, so a deck is a great way to expand that internal floor plan and continue that entertainment zone out into the back garden. And then down onto the lower area, I'm going to have a pizza oven with a concrete bench, and I'll finish off the space with some lovely pots and some herbs. We've got a break in the weather, so let's get that slab down for the paving. Due to the Australian climate, our outdoor spaces are extensions of our indoor living. So it's really important to make sure there's continuity between the two. On this project, Inga and I have worked really closely together to make sure there's a cohesive story between the two spaces. Now, when you're doing this at home by yourself, just bear in mind not to think of them as separate entities and you can connect them really easily by, for example, you could use same fixtures and fittings and hardware in your alfresco areas, or bring in some timbers and similar textures and materiality from your indoor furnishings to your outdoor settings. And you could even pick up on a few colors you've used on your walls and pull that into your plants that you've chosen. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm just playing around with some <laughs> sample pots to make an artwork for the living room. How many samples do you need, Picasso? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on over here? Right, come I'm over here. I'm loving this whole palette. I want to talk to you about what I'm doing for the alfresco area mm, and yes. the entertainment zone. I love what you've done in the kitchen and dining area. Yep, thank you. I especially love those beautiful timber floors. Yeah. So I think we carry that colour out into the alfresco area because then that's going to give you that sense of everything extending mm. out further. And those spaces are connecting and exactly. talking to each They're other talking still. To each, absolutely. The benefits of composite decking are, we're going to have minimal wear and tear. There's not going to be any color fade. And on top of that, we don't have to oil it every year. Then in that entertainment zone down lower, where we have our pizza oven, I want to do the travertine tile. Mm, like out the front. Like out the front. So that will lighten that space up. Love it. So I also noticed that you have a lot of black accents yeah. around the house. All the hardware, the window frames, exactly. things like that. I've even noticed some of your light fittings as well. Yes. I like that. So what I thought we would do is to do the fan and the light fittings in a black color, just nice. to tie that in. Yeah. Then you have a lot of greys in the kitchen, yeah. which I love. It's very tranquil. Yes. And I think what I'm going to do with the pizza oven is do a concrete bench, Ooh, even though concrete's that. quite heavy, no. but the colouring is very similar to what you're doing in All for it. I'm thinking for the outdoor furniture, we really need to have something a bit more white and timber coloured. Yeah. What okay. do you think about I that? Think totally. And it's a really simple palette, but mm. it's just going to look really classic yeah. and timeless. Well, how about I head in store and I have a look at some options. I can send you some pics and yeah, that'd be great. see what we can come up with. Good. 
Let's bring that. It smells great. <laughs> You'll be able to put that on the pizza that we cook in our pizza oven. Perfect. Well, <laughs> I'll head into store and I'll go see what I can find for you. Okay. Thank you. So Tim and his team are working so fast to get all of the external cladding put to the back of the house so that it's consistent with the front. Now these posts are going to form the supports to our pergola that's going off the back and the deck and the pergola are going to form that foundation of the backyard. This is going to be epic. I really want a pizza oven in this outdoor entertainment zone. So we're building these three Bessablock core field legs that will support our three meter long polished concrete bench. Now I'll render the outside of these legs once we're finished to give them a nice look. And other things to note, we've installed these steel uprights inside the wall that will go into the bench to support the integrity of the bench and I'm also making sure that the concrete footing is deep enough so that it supports the bench and the weight of the bench itself. I'm just giving our mandarin tree a light tip prune off our new concrete bench. I also have some citrus trees here under planted with some herbs in nice terracotta pots. Now this is a great hack if you have a balcony or you're limited for space or you just simply don't have enough soil. It also means that you get to use fresh herbs in your cooking. Oh, perfect. That's the one. Perfect. Oh, I might just have a little nap. Oh, it's really comfy. Oh. just come back from store and this is the outdoor furniture set that I chose. So Inga's designed this beautiful big deck and up here we've gone with the dining setting and when I'm picking outdoor furniture, I like to pick pieces that are classic and timeless. They're made to last. Look, this house is made to last and we want the furniture to do the same. And what I love is that there is just so much space. The way Inga designed an outdoor kitchen, space for a dining. This backs onto the other kitchen and we've got our servery window so we can pass things through easily. We've got our barbecue fridge. It's all here. Even though the budget didn't allow to do a full house extension, with this whole undercover area, it's given us a whole other room. And Inga's again designed these great little details, similar to inside what we've done with all our hardware, picked up on black accents with our heaters and our fans. There's a luxury of space up here. It's an entertainer's paradise.
Australian garden, you have a great entertainment zone. I just love this lounge sofa and these occasional chairs where you can sit and entertain with your friends. Now, how good is this concrete bench and pizza oven? It has so much preparation area and we've taken the sharp edge off the concrete so it gives it a nice soft look. I've also created a nice wood fire storage area so we've got lots of wood for our pizza oven and a place to put the basket and your kindling. Oh, Hi. what have you done? <laughs> I've got some lunch ready for us. How good is this? Oh my gosh, that is gorgeous. Well, I heard pizza oven and that was my cue. I'm here, lunchtime. I'm so hungry. And thanks for preheating this oven because it's not just a pizza oven. No. You can also cook chicken, roasts, all sorts of things. So I've got this chicken that's going to be in a little cast iron pan. Yep. You can chuck that in, slow roast it. That's just going to be a dream, but first. Pizza time. Pizza in the pizza oven. And because this is hot enough, this is going to cook in just like a couple of minutes. Then we'll chuck the chicken in. Homemade. This is wood fire pizza. Beautiful. That's delicious. That is so good. So now that I've finished zone one, we're on to zone two. So this will be our produce and play zone. So in our produce, we're going to have some raised vegetable planters and they're going to have all of our produce in it and our beautiful vegetables. We're also going to have a shed, a chicken coop, and I've got some lovely espalier fruit trees and some fruiting olives along the boundary. Now over in our kids play zone, I've got a nice kids playground with a rock wall and a slide in the front. I'm also going to do some seating that's comfortable so parents can sit on and watch. I'm also going to have some mulch underneath the playground, which is called softfall, and it's there for the kids' safety. I'm gonna finish off with framing the entire space with some treated pine edging painted in a dark color. Welcome to my production garden, where I'm gonna have all of my vegetables inside here so we can feed the family home. Now you might notice that I've got a fence around the outside. That's because I have my tool shed in here and it has the mower and the whippersnipper and we don't really want our kids to get inside. The other reason why is I also don't want family pets coming in here because they tend to scratch up the dirt. So I've gone with these lovely tall veggie boxes. There's a couple of reasons why I like using this particular one. One is it's quite high off the ground so I'm not gonna be bending over too much. The other reason is they're quite narrow so I'm able to get quite a few into this space. And also if I had a really small garden, I just need one and that actually can accommodate a lot of veggies. With our soil, we need high nitrogen soil because that's what vegetables like. So I've gone with a straight veggie mix inside the box and I'm going to add in some additional booster to make these vegetables really big. So I've gone with some sheep manure, some chicken manure and some cow manure. Now I'm gonna lay them out and get planting. Herbs and lettuce are really great all year round plants for your vegetable garden. But during the winter months, putting in your Brassicaceae family is also a really good idea. So that's going to be your Brussels sprouts, your cauliflower, cabbages and kale. 
And then during the summer months, putting in your tomatoes and your cucumbers. But always check your climate and make sure you're planting the relevant species into your vegetable garden. So make sure if you get punnets of vegetables as well, that you're actually pinching out all of the separate plants away from each other and spacing them out nicely in the bed. So I finished planting all the veggies and I'm really happy about how it looks. I'm going to put in my espaliered fruit trees over there and on the fence line, I'm going to have some gorgeous passion fruit and some raspberries. Australia asked for a production garden and I think I met the brief. I have a bit of spare time up my sleeve, so I thought I'd get my hands dirty and give Inga a hand in the backyard. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Are we getting a pony? <laughs> no, we're not getting a pony. Uh. We're getting a playground. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, a slide and everything. A slide, okay. I love a slide. Right, and it's got a climbing gym on it, and it's got rock climbing wall, what? and it's got a cargo net, and I'm going to put some lovely flags on it and style it up. I it's going to look it. so good. Yeah. You know I'm going to give all of that a go. Well, I think it's rated three plus, so... I'm three plus. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the slide, though? That's the slide. I might get stuck, but yeah, I'm willing thing. to give it a go. Now, speaking of ponies, I do have some urban farming going on here with some chickens coming so let me go and show you that yes but i also need help with the chicken coop i'll definitely take chickens over a pony okay good well you're gonna help me build it let's go <laughs> let's go <laughs> oh what's happening over here boop, 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 boop. oh look at it in here i know how good does it look this is epic it's a full veggie garden and this is my chicken coop this looks like a cubby house. Yeah, it's, it's pretty big, but I'm only gonna have two chickens in here. Oh, it's a chicken mansion. Now, all of the pieces are here, mm -hmm. the manual's over there. I'm here to help. My drill's inside my tool shed. Yep. I'm gonna leave you to it because yep. I know you're going great guns inside. Absolutely, I'm all yours. Whilst a pony would have been epic, chickens are just as good. And lucky they have the master of flat pack to build them their chicken mansion. You know I love a bit of flat pack. Did you know you could buy a box of worms from Bunnings? What? No. You can literally buy a box of live worms from Bunnings to put in your worm farm. It's crazy. Like a box of 500. I'm going to buy that right now. Click and collect. Who knew? That's the best thing I've learned all day. Establishing a worm farm is one of the best ways to process food waste from the household and it's a great way to live more sustainably. So when it comes to deciding whether you should get a worm farm or a compost bin, well that's really determined on how you use your garden and what's coming out of your house. So if you've got lots of food scraps, I would suggest going with a worm farm because the worms turn it into lovely luscious soil that you can then put back into the garden. Whereas if you've got lots of green waste clippings, lots of lawn clippings and leaves, 
compost bins are better because you can create luscious mulch and lovely soil from that. So really it's determined on how you wanna use the garden and what you have coming out of the garden to make that decision. Maybe you'll end up with both. Here you go, girls. Your new home. You go in there. In you go. Good girls. That's it. Beautiful. <gasps> it's chicken day. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, they're here. <gasps> yeah. We have chickens. I know. Do they have names? I don't know. Betty and Bob. Oh, we can do better <laughs> than that. How about Josie and Felicity? Josie and Felicity, where did you come up with that? Just came to me. Okay, <laughs> they're so cute. Everything is so lush. No, it's beautiful. that is the chicken manure, the cow manure and the sheep manure all put into here. And I've got my espaliered fruit trees and my fruiting olives just at the back here. Worm farm. And my worm farm. Oh, it's incredible. You've outdone yourself. Well, th thank you. This is, this is a literally, chef's dream. It is. And it's so close to our pizza oven too, so we can use the cooking in there. Perfect. But this is my zone two, finished. I love it. Yeah. And these two can run around this whole area, right? Yeah, you just need to keep the gate closed, but yep. this is their little area and that's really good permaculture to have them eating the bugs Great. off all of the vegetables. Well, they're looking right at home in their chicken mansion, but should we give them a bit of a spin in their new big backyard? Yeah, they can test it out. We'll Release the chooks! <laughs> <laughs> Here they come! Oh my, come on, girls. Hello, Actually, girlies. Come. We definitely need to keep this area shut so then they won't get out into the garden area. Yeah. But they can eat all of the beautiful Ooh, bugs. And, yeah, they're going to love it. Snacking on their lettuce already. Yeah, they love it. And the mulch as well is really good for their feet. Leave them to it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, so come over here. I want you to see my play zone. You know I have my eye on that. Like, <laughs> let me at it. AKA the pony paddock. <gasps> the pony paddock. Look, chickens are just as good. How good is it? This is so fun. Look at this wall. I this love is it. Amazing. Yeah, and there's a slide as well, and perfect. Beautiful bunting and. Commando. Great. Yeah, it's fun. There's a little tunnel under there. Well, I'm going to sit here and supervise you. Okay. While you go. What age is this rated for? <laughs> I think it's like three plus. I'm three plus. <laughs> that, that fits. Oh, uh, okay. Uh. You know what? I might just go around the side here. That seems safer. Yeah, that's fun. Go up onto that little ledge there. And then pop your head out the top. There you go. Yeah, hello. Is it good? I don't want to alarm you. <laughs> what? But I may have done the one thing you asked me not to do and I left the gate open and there are two chickens behind you. Jono, I told you not to leave the gate open. <laughs> the girls are out. Come on. Jono, just pick up the chicken. Let's go. I'll just usher you. Nah, she's good. She knows the way home. Come on. Let's go. Okay, well now we're just having a standoff. Just pick it up, Jono. <laughs> Look, we're making progress. Come on. Get that gate ready. Here she comes. Come on, come on. <laughs> come on. Go to mummy. Good girl. Well done. Hey, Jono. Yes. The next time I say close the gate, close, close the, the gate. gate. Yeah, I hear you. No harm done. <laughs> I'm going to go back inside where I know what I'm doing. <laughs> that was a lot of excitement for one day. Too much. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So our third zone is really going to tie all of our other zones together. Now we have this lovely lawn zone that's going to be quite big because at the end of the day, this is a family home. Now I've gone with so well to Buffalo Turf because it's hard wearing, drought tolerant and it self repairs. I also have lovely deep garden beds, which will mean that I get lots of layering in and the plants that I'm going with are the same as the ones in the front garden, giving our whole garden continuity from the front to the back.
So I need to screen off my back fence and I also want to screen out the neighbour's roof lines. So a really good plant to do this function is an olive tollies upright. Now I love this hedge. It is non-fruiting and it's a really nice dense foliage. So it gives a nice tight compact appearance and creates that hedge look that I'm after. Now, when it comes to feature trees, I always make sure that there's a feature tree in a backyard and I make sure that I go with odd numbers. So ones, threes and fives. So here I've got three feature trees and I've evenly spaced them from either side and I've also spaced them evenly from the back fence line to the front of the garden edge. Now for this feature tree, I've gone with Lagostromia indica natchez, which simply put is a white flowering crepe myrtle. So a tip here would be make sure that you get a flowering tree or something with autumn foliage. This one does both. And whenever I'm creating a garden, I always make sure I select plants and trees that do different things 365 days a year. So I'm not looking at the same garden every month. So I'm installing this dripper irrigation system into this new garden and the reason I do that is because it's a new landscape we need lots of good soil hydration through the first three summers of its life. Now when I'm setting up the irrigation system I always make sure that the lines are about 30 centimetre spacing between each other. Now that's going to mean that when the system's on, the water goes through the soil profile and meets in the middle, and it means we get no dry spots or patches. The wider the system is apart from each other, the more dry patches you're going to get. And of course, new roots don't really like the dry soil, they like moist conditions. Now, when I'm installing this system, I'm gonna make sure I have a few things. I'm gonna make sure that the irrigation system is applied directly to the soil under the mulch level, and make sure I put the pins down so that it holds the system against the soil. Installing an irrigation system is one of the best things you can do for your garden. It also means that it's gonna free up some time for you while your garden is being watered. I'm so close to finishing this garden. I've just booked the delivery of turf from Bunnings and once we lay that, we're done. not try this at home. I would always strongly advise as the professional not to lay turf in torrential downpour. And before you ask, I did actually check the weather radar and there was minimal rain forecast for today. A Little bit of rain's okay. A deluge, probably not ideal. Now I ordered the turf yesterday and it's delivered, so it just is what it is. If I don't get the turf down today, it's not gonna be beautiful and fresh, and that's what we want for great success when we're installing lawns. So it just is what it is. I gotta hand it to landscapers. On rainy days like these, it's good to be an interior designer.
The best thing that can happen to this poor turf right now is for the sun to shine and dry it up a bit. The next thing I'm gonna do is give it a nice firm roll and a top dress. This backyard took hardly any time at all, and it looks amazing. It'll continue to bring joy to whoever lives here for years to come. From the minute you walk through those bifold doors and into that incredible backyard space that Inga's designed, there's a real language and cohesion that connects the two spaces and it really ties the whole home together. When you design a garden, always look for connectivity. And the way that I've connected the deck down to the patio where the pizza oven is, through to the vegetable garden, through to the kids' play zone, means that it really flows. And that is good connectivity. My favorite thing in the backyard by a mile is that production garden. It is just the heart of this entire garden, literally feeding a family for an entire year. I just think it looks gorgeous and it's just so functional. These are really good. Like really good. I'm really glad we decided to keep the tree. We've transformed the living room by expanding it and turned the old good room into the kids' rumpus room and I'm here for it. All that's left is the wallpaper the ceiling. Oh. That's right. I'm gonna wallpaper the ceiling.